Phlebotomy Lesson 2.7 Layers of the Heart The base of the heart is its upper portion and is formed mainly by the left atrium and part of the right atrium. It is found behind the second rib in front of the descending aorta. The apex is formed by the tip of the left ventricle and lies just above the diaphragm between the fifth and sixth ribs on the left side of the chest. The human heart is about the size of a fist. It typically weighs about 11 ounces, but the size of the heart will be influenced by a number of factors, including age, weight, physical condition, and disease. Layers of the heart. The heart is comprised of three layers of tissue. The endocardium, or innermost layer, the myocardium, or middle muscular layer, and the epicardium, or the outermost layer. The heart is also enclosed in a tough, fibrous sac that contains fluid to lubricate the heart as it beats and protect the heart tissue from the foreign invaders. The sac is the pericardium. This graphic shows a cross-section of the heart's tissue and identifies each layer. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart tissue. This layer lines the inside of the entire heart and is the tissue that makes up the valves. This is a very thin layer of the heart tissue. The myocardium is the middle layer of the heart tissue and is made up of thick muscle. This layer contracts to force blood from the heart. It makes up the pumping action of the heart. This is a very thick layer of heart tissue. The epicardium is the outermost layer of heart tissue. This layer covers the outside of the entire heart and protects it from bacterial contamination and trauma. This is a very thin layer of heart tissue. The pericardium is the fibrous sac that protects the heart tissue. This layer covers the outside of the entire heart and contains fluid to lubricate the heart while it's pumping. This is a very thin but very strong layer of heart tissue. The pericardium actually consists of two layers, the parietal or inner layer and the visceral or outer layer. The visceral layer actually becomes the epicardium or outermost layer of the heart. This photo demonstrates the thickness of the myocardium compared to the thin tissue that makes up the endocardium and epicardium. Between the visceral and parietal layers of the pericardium is a lubricating fluid. Inflammation, also known as pericarditis, of the cardiac muscle can cause more fluid to be secreted, such as in rheumatoid arthritis, viral or bacterial infections, heart attack, or trauma. This buildup of additional fluid can compress the heart, making it more difficult for the chambers to fill or contract effectively. A condition called cardiac tamponade occurs when there is excessive fluid in the pericardial space that interferes with the ability to fill and contract, which diminishes cardiac output to the point of tissue hypoxia, otherwise known as a decrease in available oxygen to the tissues. This simply means the heart is not able to pump effectively and the tissues of the body are going to suffer. This is a life-threatening condition. Pericardiocentesis, or removing the excess fluid with a needle, can be done by a doctor to restore function. This chart on the layers of the heart can be printed off for handy reference. Now you should be able to list and define the layers of the heart, the endocardium, the myocardium, the epicardium, and the pericardium. You should be able to define cardiac tamponade and recognize it as an emergency situation. Great job! Now progress to the next lesson.